Hey, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how you can overcome inferiority complex. If you've struggled with this, you know how much it sucks. It's when you feel less than other people and you cannot go through life feeling like this. This cuts you off from your own power. So I want to explain how you can overcome this and really start to live in your power. To begin, I'm just going to share my own personal story because this topic is quite close to my heart. It's something that I've also struggled with. So let me take you back to my kind of history. My parents are not English, British. I live in England. They moved here from India, where my dad lived in Africa, but they're both Indian. And they moved to England. They moved to a northern town. And in this town, there wasn't very many families or people that looked like us. So there's my parents and my two sisters and me. So we just did things differently. We looked different. We had different colour skin. We were just very, very different. On top of this, because I was a boy, I was a male, I had to grow my hair. None of the other boys around me had long hair. Just me. And because of this, I had to wear a turban to tie my long hair up. My sisters, they had to grow the hair as well, but girls didn't have to tie it up. Just the boys did. So I had long hair. I was from a different family and I had to tie my hair up. So I had this like, I used to wear a turban, like a red turban. So I would really kind of stand out. On top of this, there was racism. I don't think it's as bad now, but we would be walking down the street and people would just shout abuse at us, harmful things, horrible words, based upon how we looked and who we were. So naturally that developed a very dysfunctional belief about myself. I really, on some level, made meaning out of these experiences to mean that I was somehow less than the other people around me. Because as young children, whatever happens to us, even as grown-ups, we try to make meaning on all experience. And especially as a young child who doesn't have the advantages of rational thought, if these sorts of experiences are experienced, then you are just going to start to think, okay, well, it must mean I'm not good enough. Other people are somehow better than me. And that, for me, is how my inferiority complex developed. Now, whatever happened to you is probably different from me, but I recommend you try to find out why you have developed this belief that you are somehow less than other people. For me, this become like a core part of my identity. As you can see, the things I went through, this is what I really believed on a deep level. And what happens when this kind of belief gets programmed and tied into your identity, it really becomes who you are and it becomes a deep part of your subconscious programming. So everything you do, you see the world through the lens of other people are better than me. Everywhere you go, you're always looking at things through that perception. Because of this, you will act and behave in certain ways. So I'm just going to give you a couple of ways that this inferiority complex can manifest in your life and how you, the things you might do and how you might behave. There's probably many. I'm just going to rattle off a couple of the most popular ones, I guess. So one is you might play small. You go through life just not really being yourself, not really being in your power. You just go through life... Feeling like nobody really cares what you've got to say. You might be socially awkward. You might be socially anxious. Because your whole life you've always felt you're less than other people. So why would anybody care what you've got to say? Again, this is just all your belief systems. You may feel easily intimidated by other people. Again, you've given other people so much power, right? By thinking them to be better than you. So naturally, you can feel intimidated, you might see other people achieving things or doing things that you would really like to do. That can even make you resentful and angry and jealous. These again come from you having this inferiority complex. Usually emotions like jealousy and resentment and anger, they are just cover up emotions to hide the deeper feeling you have about yourself. It's easier to feel angry at someone else than to own that Deep down, you don't feel good enough, right? Anger's like the lesser of the two. I'll get angry at other people for doing well. I'll get jealous rather than own deep down, I think they're better than me. Other ways this can show up is just through constant 
comparison to others. Again, this is probably something that happens with social media. We're always comparing ourselves. And even if you're not doing it consciously, it's going on unconsciously. If you're constantly looking at pictures and videos of people who have lots of money and they're living this extravagant lifestyle, on some level, you're going to start to feel like they are better than you, right? It's just how we work. And also, you might even develop a superiority complex, which is the opposite of an inferiority complex, but it's essentially coming from the same source. So some people who develop this complex, rather than go small and hide, they become a bit narcissistic. They develop this, like, like a an inflated sense of themselves. You might have met people like this who have a big ego or, or they appear to be too confident, like just too much, a bit narcissistic, right? That again is hiding their inferiority. Their way of dealing with their inferiority was to develop this big, like, fake mask, this narcissistic personality, rather than own that they just don't feel good about themselves. So one of the core things here about this inferiority complex, it's always related to other people. It's going to affect you in relationships a lot. For you to have healthy relationships, you need to meet people at the level that they are at. You need to have enough respect for yourself that you can meet them where they are. If you respect them too much, then you're never going to have a, a, a good relationship with them. You might have experienced this romantically, right? If you put someone on a pedestal, it's never going to work out. They are going to feel somehow superior to you, and nobody wants to be in a relationship with someone they feel superior to, right? We want, obviously, some level of equality. So let's get to the meat of this issue. The meat of this issue is that you do not feel powerful. You feel powerless, which is what happens when you develop this sort of complex. Now, what happens is when you feel inferior, you are projecting your own power onto other people, making them appear to have more power to be these almighty people. That's your power you have given away. I mean, think back to my story. How could I have developed a sense of being powerful in this world when I just felt like an outsider and people were abusing me based on who I was, mimicking me, looking different? I had no power, right? I give it away. I thought other people were somehow better than me because they all belonged and I didn't belong. And this is what happens when you develop inferiority complex. You lose touch with your power and you give it away. Obviously, you don't do it consciously. So to really resolve this issue, you've got to start owning your power, which then leads us to the question of what is power? This is something that I've thought a lot about because I used to hear these quotes all the time. Don't be afraid of your power. Own your power. And I'd be thinking, like, what's power? Like, what is my power? I think I've got an idea now. So I would define your power as you being you to the fullest, your best ability, right? You just being you as much as you possibly can. That is what it means for you to have your power. That means you move through life doing what you want to do. With all due respect to everybody else, you're not out here trying to hurt anyone, step on anyone's toes. You're just doing you to your fullest ability. That's what it means to be powerful, to move towards the things that you want unapologetically, to speak your truth, to have a voice, to say what you want to say. Again, we're not intentionally trying to hurt other people or offend other people. You might be worried about having power because it's scary to have that level of responsibility over yourself. It's scary to think you might offend people. It's going to happen. I'm sorry, but if you want your power, this is what comes with it. Again, I want to reiterate the point. We are not intentionally trying to offend other people, but other people will be offended. Think about the times you've been offended where you've met someone who was powerful. They might not have wanted to offend you, but you might have took offense. Probably because you had, well, you had your own insecurities, right? So most of the people that we will offend will probably have their own insecurities. 
You cannot let other people's insecurity stop you from stepping into your power. Let that land. The only way out of this is for you to own yourself. So moving on, I want to talk about how this lack of power manifests itself in your whole being. It manifests on three levels. First level it manifests on is the psychological level. It's on the level of beliefs. Belief system. So again, like I've talked about, you might have the belief that you're not good enough. That you don't deserve something. That other people are better than you. Again, these beliefs are very, very powerful. It will manifest itself emotionally. So you will develop the emotional like programming of someone who doesn't feel good enough. You might feel ashamed, embarrassed, intimidated, depressed, anxiety, like fear, all these sorts of emotions you will probably feel a lot of. Because they are the emotions that go with someone who feels inferior, you see. And then the third thing is energetically. You will energetically suppress your own energy. If you've ever seen someone who's truly powerful, when they walk into a room, they'll light the whole room up, right? That's someone whose energy is not constricted. Their energy is expansive because they're owning their power. You, if you have inferiority complex, you've somehow learned to contract your own energy so you can be small. That will manifest itself in a lack of vitality, vibrancy, um, positive emotion, weak posture, just anything to like keep yourself small. Think about what that does to you on all these three levels, psychologically, emotionally and energetically. It just shifts you completely from who you're meant to be. That is a very like disempowering way to live. And the opposite of that, can you imagine if you were living in your power, how your beliefs would change? How you would feel emotionally? You would feel more positive emotion, right? You'd be more vital, more vibrant, more expansive, more expressive. So finally, let's talk about how you can overcome inferiority complex and reconnect to your power. First thing is you need to find out where your inferiority came from. Obviously, I shared my story. Just have a look at your own life. Why do you feel you got this? I'm not saying get stuck on this and get depressed about it and sad about it. No, just recognize where it came from and just bring awareness to it. Understanding is very, very powerful, but don't get stuck there. The second thing I suggest you do is look at all the ways this inferiority manifests in your own life because it'll be manifesting in many ways. Maybe you hold yourself back in your career. Maybe you don't pursue the type of relationships that you want. Maybe there's certain passions and hobbies and interests that you have. You just don't move towards them. I don't know. You need to look at your own life and see how does this inferiority, these beliefs I've got, limit me. The more awareness you begin to bring to them and see them in all the little areas, again, the more you can start to change them. The third thing I suggest you do is start to pay attention to your own strengths and attributes. No matter how less you think of yourself, you all have gifts, you all have strengths. And only by bringing awareness to them, seeing them, writing them down, becoming aware of them, can you actually begin to embrace them. This might be difficult for some of you to do, but it's very, very powerful. Always be looking for things that you're good at or things that you enjoy. That is tapping you into your power. So very key step. The next step, again, something I talk a lot about is to identify the emotions that come with this feeling of inferiority and sit with them, meditate with them, be present with them. If you can do this with enough consciousness, enough focus, gradually these emotions and feelings will start to just resolve themselves. The reason they are controlling you now is because they are unconscious. When you bring consciousness to what is unconscious, it changes. When you bring consciousness to negative emotions, they shift, they change. It might take some time, but be patient. And the fifth and final step for this is for you to pursue something in your life that you really, really want to experience, whatever that is, and really commit to it. And I would suggest to make it something that is really outside of your comprehension, outside of anything you've ever experienced in your life. It could be a big grand goal. 
and then commit to it, start to move toward it. Obviously, this is the hardest step, as you can probably <clears throat> imagine. But this is going to really start to build you up. This is what's really going to start to tap you into your power when you begin to move towards your goal. To see that, you know what, actually, I think I can get there. This is what you'll start to believe after a while. This will begin to nurture self-respect, self-confidence, right? I mean, think about your goal, whatever it is that you want. If you met someone who's achieved that goal, would you respect that person? I'm pretty sure that you would. You would have a certain level of respect. Now, this is what happens when you start to move towards goals. You start to respect yourself. It's earned respect. It's not built on just me visualizing or affirmations or whatever. No, you earned it by walking the fucking path. So set the goal, commit to the goal, start moving towards the goal. That's how you build self-respect. That's how you tap into your power and all your problems and obstacles you're going to have to overcome to get to the goal is again going to be tapping you, tapping you into more and more of your power. This is how power is built, right? And eventually you'll stop thinking other people are better than you because you actually found it for yourself. But we need challenge, we need obstacles, we need things to overcome. Okay, so that's all I've got for you in this video. I hope this helps some of you out. If you have anything to add, any comments, any questions, please share them. Um, otherwise, if you please go ahead, give the video a like, share, subscribe. It really helps me out. But until next time, God bless.